Jean Trevi for Library Edition and welcome back. Library Edition comes to you each week from the Florida Center for the Book, a project in cooperation with the Library of Congress Center for the Book to bring readers and writers closer together. And my guest writer today is Captain Frank Pappy. We're here to talk about the fourth edition of a book that's really become a standard and it's entitled Tr Cruising Guide to the Florida Keys. We're going to find out what are all the changes that need a fourth edition in just a moment, but first, welcome aboard, Captain. Pappy. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, you're comfortable here, landlocked for a short time. Yeah, I, I enjoy being on the land as much as on the water. Good. Uh, well, I think your book is going to help uh, land lovers and sailors too make that transition so that they can be comfortable in in the Florida key, uh, Keys. You're making quite a case, though, for cruising in the Keys versus cruising in the Bahamas. Why is that? Well, Jean, um, the main advantage is to have everything close by like Coast Guard assistance, uh, uh, medical help and uh, and be close in to the beautiful reefs and uh, sort of help the economy and keep the money from going out of the country is one reason. And is it less expensive? Oh definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, produce for for buying supplies on the boat are less expensive. If you have a boat breakdown in the Bahamas, say in the Barry Islands, you usually have to fly out to get your pot, come to the States, get it, and pay duty and bring it back. So, mm -hmm. in the Keys, you can call somebody in Fort Lauderdale or Miami and they can send it down to you on the bus or whatever. Uh -huh. uh, how about the water itself, though? You know, we hear all these uh, glamorous claims for, oh, there's nothing to compare with the water in the Bahamas for color, clarity. Uh, well, what we have is the Gulf Stream that comes in between Bimini and the Florida Keys. So you, you have it, uh, the clear water on both sides of the Gulf Stream. Um, we have what they call a John Pennycamp Park, mm -hmm. which is really beautiful with coral rocks. And actually, uh, if you go just to the beginning of the Bahamas, you'll find that uh, there are more fish and more coral uh, in the uh, Florida Keys and in John Pennycamp Park than it is in the Bahamas. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, why is that? Doesn't that chain continue all the way down? Well, the uh, John Penny Camp Park, they don't allow you to spear any fish, and they don't allow you to take any coral at mm -hmm. all. Well, in the Bahamas, you can spear fish and spear lobster, and, and it makes the fish a little jumpy. When they see a diver out in the water, they mm -hmm. immediately disappear. When uh, where the national parks are in the Keys, the fish sort of, they're used to you. A lot of people even feed them. <laughs> well, you do devote a considerable amount of attention to uh, the Pennycamp Park, but that is such a unique installation. I mean, it's an underwater national park, and I think, it, what, is it the only one of its kind? I believe it is, yes. Mm -hmm. um, we have an, another place further down called Lukey, and to me, when I take a charter down, and also doing research on my book, uh, to have a, somebody who's never been under the water before, and when they may have snorkeled in a pool or on the beach, and when they dive underwater for the first or second time and see all the color fans and the different types of fish, and as I can feel it in myself when I'm diving along with them, when they come up out of the water, they want to stop and talk about oh, it and yeah. how beautiful it is. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's, it's exhilarating. It's I guess we should mention, though, that at Penny Camp, for people who, for whatever reason, uh, are not into diving, even snorkeling, that they can take underwater uh, boats with the underwater uh, glass where you can actually see a tremendous amount. Oh, yeah, they are. Uh, they cruise all the reefs, and if you don't want to get in the water, you can do it that way. I've had charters who uh, who didn't want to get into the water right away because they'd read Jaws or whatever. <laughs> so I'll usually uh, let them put their head over the side of the dinghy with their face mask on, and oh, I'll yeah. take my flippers and mask and snorkel and tow them around the reef like you're a small <laughs> glass bottom boat, and they can... They, pretty soon they get comfortable and then they'll get into the water. Oh, that sounds like a good way to, to go. Now let's just uh, talk about how clear that water is because that is the reputation of the Bahamas, but here we are, uh, despite all the concern, or maybe because people have been concerned, we really do have good visibility. It seems like you can see forever. Yeah, the only problem, uh, I've been doing my guide since 1977 when it first came out, and they built the uh, power plant 
down uh, in Biscayne Bay, mm -hmm. and they have a cooling canal that dumps into the bay. And from my experience, since they built it, I can't see any difference. So water is a little warmer, and they say it promotes the uh, fish even more in the area. In terms of growth, you mm -hmm. mean? Mm -hmm. But the Gulf Stream, which was uh, named and and plotted by Benjamin Franklin, which a lot of people don't know, oh, yeah. <laughs> keeps the water in, in the Keys really clean, you know, sweeping it, uh, moving it two and a half knots in its axis. And that's where all the reefs are, right on the edge of the Gulf Stream. So mm -hmm. it's, it keeps it really nice. It gets a little rough, and if the wind is blowing 15 to 20 miles an hour, you have to be careful. But Yes, you do make distinction, uh, cautionary notes about the Gulf Stream. Uh, particularly, I guess it depends on exactly which direction you're traveling. Yeah. If the wind is blowing out of the north, it's blowing against it. And whenever you have the wind against the water, it creates a, a larger swell and can create some problems. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is that uh, an area, though, that sailors particularly like? Yes, the fishing. Uh, for catching wahoo, dolphin, um, mackerel, and a few barracudas. <laughs> um, the, the satisfaction with a sailor to be able to ride the wind and get your food from the sea and an anchor in a, you know, behind an island on a beautiful sunset, to me, is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. well, your book is just uh, laced with, I thought they were the actual charts, but you make a point of saying these are not the actual charts, but it does show in such detail all the many islands that are available for safe harbor, uh, either, you know, coming or going, as far as, say, maybe the Keys or all the way around uh, over to the Dry Tortugas. Yeah, and um, I started sailing the Keys in 67, and I noticed there were a lot of places that weren't recommended to go in by local knowledge, and a lot of places that showed that it was uh, very deep were quite shallow on the chart. So I saw a need. There was a guide for the Bahamas, and there was a no guide for the Keys. So I said, you know, I really don't want to have everybody and his brother down here, you know, making it too crowded, but. I think this should be known, the, the beauty and the, mm -hmm. and the, uh, the sailing uh, area on the, on the bay side is quite shallow. And if you have a boat with a four foot six draft or less, you can cruise in very um, protected waters and feel secure with uh, never being in more than 12 to 15 feet of water. So if you have a problem, you can anchor or you can call the Coast Guard. or uh, whatever, get a fisherman to tow you in, and, and you're in safe waters. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about this being the fourth edition. Now, have you seen a great many changes over the years from one edition to another? Well, mostly in the uh, in the marinas. There are many, many more marinas opening up, and there. Uh, We've moved considerable beyond uh, what Gilbert's fishing camp. Yeah, that's the old landmark. Uh -huh. um, it. Uh, at Winley Key, mm -hmm. they have a beautiful morning at the Holiday Isles. And they have a lot more entertainment. And a lot of people want to go to Nassau and Freeport and wherever for Calypso music and, and Bahamian music. Well, the Keys has several singers. Jimmy Buffett is one oh, of them. Oh, yeah, and, uh, one of the most uh, distinguished yeah. coming out of that. Uh -huh. And another fellow named Pineapple. I don't know his last name, but he's, he writes a lot of songs about the Keys. And another guy named Bertie Higgins wrote a song called Key Lago, which mm -hmm. hit the charts. Oh, yeah. It was very popular. Do you think that's had much influence?